The crosspoint symbols are a powerful component of the symbol library. They can make adding hardware to an existing program extremely easy, and they give you dynamic control over signal routing within your programs. The crosspoint is going to be broken into three videos. This is the first one, and we're going to talk about connecting one controller to one equipment crosspoint. The crosspoint is actually made up of three symbols. There's the control crosspoint, the equipment crosspoint, and then finally the almighty crosspoint connector. The control crosspoint takes inputs that can be digital, analog, or serial on its left hand side and passes those to the outputs of an equipment crosspoint. And then similarly, the equipment crosspoint can take inputs on its left hand side and then pass those to the outputs of the control crosspoint. But before we can pass any signals between a controller and an equipment, we have to manage connections between the two. How do we do that? Well, every control crosspoint has its own control ID, and every equipment crosspoint has its own equipment ID, and these uniquely identify any equipment or control crosspoint in the entire program. To connect a controller to equipment, you put the control ID into the connector, you put the equipment ID into the connector, you pick how or if you want to disconnect any existing connections, and then finally you set the connect input high. A connection is made between the specified IDs once that connect input goes high. So what are the options for disconnecting? Well first you can disconnect a specific controller from a specific equipment. You can disconnect all equipment connected to a specific controller. You can disconnect all controllers connected to a specific equipment. And then the last option, you can disconnect all of the crosspoint symbols defined in your program. And what is the most difficult thing about crosspoints? It's definitely managing the connections. So the way we're going to start out this video series is by doing a simple example with one controller connected to one equipment crosspoint at a time. Let's go ahead and jump into that. So what we're going to do is relay the commands from these button presses through a control crosspoint and then to one of these equipment crosspoints. The feedback that we're going to get on these buttons will depend on which equipment crosspoint we're connected to. So to get us started in the program, I'm just going to add a control crosspoint, speed key C cross, two equipment crosspoints, speed key E cross, and then finally the equipment crosspoint connector, which is speed key E C C O N. And then for the sake of organization, I'm going to put the equipment crosspoints in their own subfolders. And before we do anything crosspoint related, we've got to pull the joins from the X panel into the simple program. So let me save this. We'll open up the X panel. And which joins are we using again? All right, so we're using presses one through five for buttons and then 11 through 14 for connection. Okay. And we're just going to worry about connecting equipments one and two for now. So our single control cross point is going to take the first five button presses and then relay those to one of our two equipment cross points. So let's pull those open. So we're going to take these buttons and put them on the inputs of the control cross point. So it's kind of weird. They call it an output on the control cross point because technically these signals are going to be considered inputs for the equipment. Okay, so let's get rid of the X panel for now and pull open our first equipment cross point. We're using digital outputs one, two, three, four, and five, which means that these signals will be captured by equipment inputs one, two, three, four, and five on the equipment cross point. So let's give these some conspicuous names. And now we can actually do something with these signals. We're gonna take this first button press and have it drive a toggle. And we can close the control cross point for now because we don't need it. All right, so button equip one button one's gonna go to our clock input. And don't worry about the outputs of these symbols just yet. Buttons two and three we're going to use to drive the inputs of a set reset latch. Stand those up a little better.
And then buttons four and five are going to drive the up and down inputs of an analog ramp. So let's get rid of those two, add an analog ramp. And then four and five go to the up and downs. We'll just give this an arbitrary ramp time of three seconds. So what we want to do now is take all of the outputs from the symbols that we've just added and pass them back to the control cross point. So the outputs of these symbols are going to go into the outputs of our equipment cross point because they're going to be considered inputs for our controller. So the toggle will go back to button one, the set reset latch outputs will go back to buttons two and three. We're only using buttons four and five for momentary input on the analog ramp, so those won't go through any processing. But we are going to take the analog value from the ramp and then pass that back to the controller on its analog input number one. All right, so now we're receiving stuff from the controller. We're sending stuff back to the controller. Now we need to make sure that the controller captures all of this feedback. So let's close all of these symbols and open up the controller. And what's kind of nice is the controller doesn't need to know what's happening behind the scenes of the equipment cross point. So what we're going to do is just name these inputs something kind of agnostic. Oh, and I can't forget to grab the analog value that's being fed back. Okay, so just as a quick recap, here's what we're doing. From our X panel, we're grabbing our button presses. We're passing those to the outputs quote unquote, of our control cross point, which get translated into inputs for our equipment. From there, the equipment cross point is passing those to a couple of signals. The outputs of those symbols are going back to the digital outputs of the equipment cross point, and those signals get routed back to the digital input of the control cross point. So the last thing that we need to do is take the outputs of the control cross point and just make them available on our X panel. All right, so we got our button feedbacks. Let's just copy the analog value over. That's it for signal passing. The second equipment cross point is going to do things just a little bit differently. Note that for the second equipment, we have to use all of the same input joins as we did on the first one. So our first digital input on the second equipment cross point is gonna do the same thing as the first. It's going to drive a toggle. Oops. And we know that the output of that toggle is going to go back to the control cross point, so we'll just call this something obvious. And the output of this toggle, we're also going to have it drive an oscillator's input, which we're gonna give high time and low time of half a second. The output of the oscillator is going to feed digital output number two on the equipment cross point. And then we're going to take that output and knot it. And make that feedback go to digital output number three. And we're just going to ignore any button presses that come from the controller for now. And then buttons four and five are going to do the same as in the first equipment. They're just going to drive the inputs of an analog ramp. So we'll add the ramp in here. Get rid of these guys. And for the sake of variety, we'll just give it a ramp time of two seconds. And we already know what analog output this value has to go to because we defined it earlier. And again, the volume up down buttons are gonna be momentary. All right, so, so far we know how we're passing data from the controller to a given equipment cross point. But what we haven't done yet is sort out how the controller and the equipment cross points are connected. So let's go ahead and take care of that now. I'm gonna add one more subfolder and we're gonna put the connection logic inside of that. So in the beginning, we said that the controllers and the equipments are connected based on these IDs down here at the bottom. So I've got to specify some IDs for my equipment and my controller, and then we can finally mess around with the equipment connector. We've only got one controller 
and I'm just gonna name it, give it an ID, something weird, and note that these IDs are completely arbitrary. All right, equipment cross point number one, we're gonna give that an ID 494, the second one 495, and now the controller and the equipments are ready to be connected. So I'm gonna go ahead and close those, and what we wanna do is only connect one equipment to the cross point at a time, otherwise we're gonna get weird jamming issues. We only have the one controller, so the control ID can be set to whatever the controller's ID is permanently. So I'll add an analog initialize, add the controller's ID to it, and then just give this a, an input value of 1 since it's never going to change. But now how are we going to connect the equipment? Well, we know from the X panel that we're going to be using joins 12 and 13. So let's go ahead and pull up the X panel. And we'll use another analog initialize. With two digital inputs. When we want to connect the first equipment cross point, we'll supply its equipment ID, which is 494, and then do the same thing for the last one. And these will be our equipment IDs. So we're specifying IDs that we want to connect with. Now we just need to add the connection and disconnection logic. And the equipment ID is the only thing that can change. So what we're going to do is add an analog one shot so that whenever the equipment ID changes, we send a little pulse that triggers a stepper that'll first tell the program to disconnect any equipment connected to our one controller and then connect the two devices specified in the control ID and equipment ID. Let me get rid of these here. Since we're disconnecting everything from the controller specified here, we're going to use this to disconnect from C, and then our connect input will go straight to connect on the connecting cross point. Oh, and I forgot to comment out the busy line. And then if you remember, on our X panel, we also had a button to disconnect everything. So we're just going to take this button press and bring it straight to the disconnect all input on the cross point controller. And it's giving us a, an incomplete warning because it wants these two signals to be defined, so we'll just comment those out. And that's all that we need to do for two equipment cross points. Let's save, compile, and upload this, and then make sure that everything works correctly. Now for the moment of truth. We haven't told the program to connect to anything yet, so messing with these buttons doesn't do anything. Let's connect to our first equipment cross point, and already we see feedback from button number three. So if I play with these buttons, we see that button one toggles. Buttons two and three are interlocked together because they're separate inputs of a set reset latch. And then the up and down buttons mess with that analog ramp that we added. Awesome, very cool. Okay, so that's working. That's really relieving. Let's see what happens when we connect to equipment cross point number two. Okay, so all the stuff that we had before is still running in the program. But what's happening is we're only seeing the feedback of the symbols that are connected to equipment number two. And if I play with these... Ooh, cool. So button one sets the toggle input high, which drives the output of our oscillator. And while the oscillator moves, Buttons 2 and 3, their feedback alternates between high and low. And then the up and down buttons, just like before, change the value of the analog slider because they're connected to that analog ramp. So very awesome. Alright, so watch this. I'm going to leave button 1 set high, I'm going to move that analog value up high, and I'm going to switch back to equipment number 1. Very cool! Okay, so all the values that we set before we switched over to controlling the stuff in equipment number two are the same as they were before. And I can do this as many times as I want. 
I'll go back and forth between the two. You see the feedback still exists. It's running in the background. We're just not seeing it because we're only connected to one equipment at a time. And if I wanted to eliminate my feedback altogether, I could just hit the disconnect button. And the only thing that doesn't change is the analog value because those are persistent. Cool, so now that we've done a few of these together, it's your turn. Overworked Logic is having a little contest. On our website, link shown here, we have a problem statement using what we've learned today. The first person to send a working program that meets the specifications on the web page will win this awesome Overworked Logic t-shirt. So if you haven't done it yet, head over to the website, check out the contest description, sign up for the newsletter, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we will see you in Crosspoint 102. All right, well, that wraps it up for this video. Thank you everyone for watching, liking, and subscribing. We'll see you in the next one.